Get daily encouragement sent straight to your inbox with the Jesus Calling Daily Email. This free email highlights select excerpts from Jesus Calling and other titles from Sarah Young, along with a special passage of Scripture to help jumpstart your day. Sign up for free at JesusCalling.com forward slash daily email. God showed me that no matter where we are, we can be of inspiration to one another. We can be joy in time of sadness. We can be hope for those that are hopeless. We can be love for those who feel that they have hate in their heart. We can be understanding for those who are confused. Welcome to the Jesus Calling Podcast. This week, we're celebrating Freedom Day, or what is more commonly known as Juneteenth, the oldest nationally celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States. Anthony Ray Hinton is an American activist, writer, and author who was wrongly convicted of the 1985 murders of two fast food restaurant managers in Birmingham, Alabama. Hinton was sentenced to death and held on the state's death row for 28 years. During that time, he befriended a member of the Ku Klux Klan, and through that friendship, that man moved from a life of hatred to a love for people of all races and a love for God. Ultimately, Anthony was found to be innocent of his charges and was released from prison. Dr. John M. Perkins has been a counselor to six presidents, a community development leader, and a civil rights legend. Dr. Perkins grew up in Mississippi and was born during the height of Jim Crow and the Great Depression. The loss of his mother due to malnutrition and his brother, who was killed by police after his return from World War II, shaped Perkins' life and ultimately inspired him to pursue civil rights issues, particularly around racial violence in the U.S. Today, at 92 years old, Dr. Perkins continues his work by shedding light on injustices and drawing Christians into the work of social justice and civil rights. Both of these men give us a picture of the trials and tribulations they've had to endure in this life, exacerbated by issues of race and how they've dedicated their lives to spreading love over hate and the joy that comes in the freedom they found in Christ. Let's start with Anthony's story. My name is Anthony Ray Hinton and I was born in Birmingham, Alabama. I live a somewhat carefree life. I wake up every morning with joy and I go to bed with joy. The thing that I try every day, I try my best to show someone love. I try my best to show someone understanding. And I always try to be a person of encouragement. And so I wouldn't trade who I am and what I am for no amount of money. And I wouldn't sell myself for no amount of money. I'm just so thankful that my mother brought me up to be blessed, be thankful for what I have and to love even those who don't love me, to pray for those who despitefully use me. I went to trial and got convicted and was sentenced to death. And at that moment when the judge said, Anthony Ray Hinton, I sentence you to death. For a split second, I lost my eyesight. I look back to see my niece was sitting behind me and I I kid you not, I could not see anything but darkness. And when I turned my head back around to face the judge, my sight came back. And when I got to death row, I didn't say a word for three years because I was so angry. And I kept wondering, where was this God that I love and praised and thought so highly of where was God when I was being lied on? Where was God when I was being falsely accused of murder that he know and I know that I didn't commit? I asked God, what did I do so bad that you abandoned me in the time that I needed you? I couldn't understand the God that I love the God that I believe, the God that sit high and looks low, why would he allow them to convict me and then the judge sentenced me to death? And I didn't understand it. But to be honest with you, I should 
have played my mother's voice, she would say, always wait on God's plan. Always be patient. God may not give you what you want right then, but I promise you, he's always on time. There are going to be people that dislike you simply because of the color of your skin. My mother didn't say white people was going to dislike me. She didn't say black people. She didn't say Chinese or Vietnamese, whatever. She said people. And she was letting me know that even people of your own race would not like you. But she said, these are the people that I want you to learn to love and pray for even more. And so I learned how to pray and I learned how to ask God to do whatever needs to be done for that person to bring love into their heart because it's, it, I've learned something. It's not about me. It's about them. Within 15 years, a man that came to death row who thought he hated me because of the color of my skin would become my best friend. Who would have thought that this man would introduce me to his father, who was the Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan? Who would have thought his son would say, Daddy, this is my friend Ray? Who would have thought it? I believe if I had to pick anything out why God allowed me to go to death row, I really believe that God wanted me to meet Henry Francis Hayes. He wanted Henry Francis Hayes to experience unconditional love. And he wanted Henry Francis Hayes to see that love can come from anybody, regardless of your color. But he wanted him to see it come from a black man. And in 15 years, Henry stopped using the N-word and started saying, my brother Ray, my friend Ray. And then on the night of his execution, never stood and been more proud of a human being than I was Henry. Henry said, all of my life, I was taught to hate. All of my life, my mother, my father, my community taught me nothing but to hate. And the people that they taught me to hate for the last 15 years are the people who showed me nothing but love. And tonight, as I leave this world, I leave this world now knowing what love feels like. Isn't God amazing? I had went to Birmingham for a court hearing and one of the lawyers was walking away and then he turned around and said, Mr. Hinton, you need to call Mr. Stevenson. Uh, somehow they hooked it up where I could get to him and he told me, Sir Ray, you're not going to believe this, but you're going home. And I hadn't allowed myself, nor had I thought about home for 30 years. I didn't want to think about it, make it worse than what it already was. And when Mr. Stevenson told me that I was really going home, I just began to cry. And I began to thank God. And he told me the procedure that Monday morning, I was going to walk out. I think it was Monday. 
And he said, I'm in New York, but I will be there. And at that moment, I went from being happy to being sad. I knew that my mother would not be there to see me. And I just knew that all of those years, my mom had prayed. My mom had kept hope. And for whatever reason, I needed her. But I knew that my mother lives inside of me every day. And I was determined to be a voice for those who don't have a voice. I have to fight for those who can't fight for themselves. I love the fact that every night I go to sleep, my hands is clean. I love the fact that he gave me a forgiving heart because I forgave those men. They got together and lied on me, had me convicted, had every intention of killing me for a crime they knew that I didn't commit. I want people to realize that forgiveness is not a sign of weakness, but forgiveness is a sign of strength. You can find Anthony Ray Hinton's book, The Sun Does Shine, everywhere books are sold. Stay tuned to Dr. John M. Perkins' story after a brief message. Life can be overwhelming at times, whether there are global issues that leave you feeling helpless or the day-to-day -day struggles that make you feel hopeless. God is still there for you, ready to hear your prayer at any time. That's why Sarah Young wrote the new book, Jesus Listens. She wanted to deliver a message of peace, love, and hope to her readers every day. Jesus Listens is a 365-day prayer devotional with short, heartfelt prayers based on Scripture, written to deepen your relationship with God and change your heart. Learn more about Jesus Listens and download a free sample at jesuscalling.com slash jesuslistens. Our next guest is Dr. John M. Perkins, counselor to six presidents, community development leader, and civil rights legend. Dr. Perkins' work centers around the notion that God created one human race to reflect His love and His compassion in the world. He wants to further the central message of the gospel, which is about loving everyone of every race while being reconciled to God and to each other. My name is John Perkins. I'm a Bible teacher. I didn't grow up in a religious community. I grew up not believing that separate could be equal. My mother died of a disease. They call it proliger. It had to do with nutrition deficiency. And without a doctor, without medical care, without the food she needed for her society. So I grew up in that situation. She died when I was seven months old. And uh, they didn't have milk cow, but some lady down the street saw her in poverty and saw me as a little baby in poverty and brought a quarter milk during that time that helped me. She died and I live. Now, a lot of this, what I'm telling you, of course, I learned it later on as I was a uh, growing up. When my brother went to the military and came back from the military in 45, 46, during World War II, uh, he was in a theater with his girlfriend, exciting, uh, going upstairs in a separate place, and the police would come along and hit them on the head or, or do something, t tell them to be quiet. And my brother, just out of the military, somebody hit him on the back of the head. He had spun around and, and, and went to catch the gun. And, and the guy 
stepped back and shot him two times and he was killed. Can you see why young blacks can get so angry when they examine the history of killing the young blacks? I don't blame them. We shouldn't be doing each other like that. We ought to be trying to love each other, be kind and loving, that we would do justice, we would love mercy, and we'd walk humbly. I grew up in that, so seated down in me was a rebellious spirit to an unjust society. After I was beaten in jail, my main doctor was a white Catholic young lady, wanted to be a missionary, and she was going to be a a doctor missionary. She was there to uh, serve me, rescue me. At some time, I didn't want to see no white folk, but they was there loving me too. Oh, Lord, have mercy. It didn't start with me. It started with her loving me. She became an extension of that redemptiveness. That's the mission of the church. That's the mission of Christianity. And we have made the mission almost the saving of ourselves. Oh, God have to help us. We are broken sinners. We can't save ourselves. For by God's love and grace are we saved. And that's through faith, believing him. It's not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of our own effort. I came to know Christ and to want to worship him by having an encounter with my own son, when he was about three years old, going to a good news club, a Bible club, and I asked him what was he learning, and he sung me a song. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red, brown, and yellow, black, and white. They're all precious in his sight. God loves the little children of the world. Now, I'm 25, six years old, Now, with my own son, about three or four years old, and for the first time in my life, I hear the central message of the gospel. The central message is about loving each other and being reconciled to God and to each other. And the essence of human language is love one another because God created one human race in his image to reflect his love and his compassion in the world. When we see the needs of each other and God give us the passion to reach out after those who are broken, that's why he came. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God That's the message we need today. Black folks need that message. White folks need that message. Minorities need that message. We need Jesus. Prayer is really attempting to love God with all your heart and all your soul. And prayer is listening. And that's what prayer is was meant to be. Prayer was meant for us coming to God, knowing that we are broken, knowing that we are sinners, and crying out to him, Lord, forgive me, redeem me. And I believe that I hear that. I believe that you hear that. I believe that you have already heard that. And when I see these books that you are writing here on Jesus Calling and those things, what you've been doing is listening. 
You know the scholar Henry Down, who died a few years ago. I became a friend somewhat of Henry now, and I've learned so much. I love his little devotional, Morning with Henry. I love your devotional here, Jesus Calling. Walk with me in the freedom of forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. If you carry a burden of guilt on your back, you are more likely to stumble and fall or fail. At your own request, I will remove the heavy load from you and bury it at the foot of the cross. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Look for my face and feel the warmth of my love. It is the unconditional love that frees you from both fear and sin. Spend time bathing in the light of my presence as you come to know me more and more. Prayer is something like the first psalm. How do we meditate upon God day and night? Then he said, if we can do that, we'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season. It leaves shall not wither those leaves of healing. It'll be a healing tree there for every month in the year. The leaves heals us. Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. So our redemption is not of ourselves. Our redemption is a gift of God. That's why we should love one another. Love is eternal. Isn't that beautiful? To learn more about Dr. John Perkins and his work, visit johnmperkins.com. If you'd like to hear more stories about the freedom we can find in our relationship with Christ, check out our interview with Sadie Robertson. Next time on the Jesus Calling Podcast, we hear from author Janine Urbaniak-Reed, whose son was diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumor at only 10 years old. Suffering from PTSD, it took Janine a while to come to terms with the diagnosis. She'll share some things she's learned about how we can survive the tension that comes with uncertainty and how God will be sitting in it with us always. You don't need to judge yourself so harshly. And there is no perfect. There is no perfect here. But an open-hearted, loving you, showing up with all your humanness and all your flaws and all of your love and all your joy, that's the point. The point was never to be a perfect mom. The point was always to just be a human mom and love these people through it all. Want to hear more inspirational stories of people who have been changed by a closer walk with God? Then subscribe today to the Jesus Calling Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And please be sure to leave a review, which helps us reach and inspire others with these stories. Plus, if you like seeing our guests as well as hearing them, you can find video interviews available on our YouTube channel at youtube.com Jesus Calling Book on Facebook and on the Jesus Calling Instagram page.